welcome back to the procurement marketplace. I hope everyone enjoyed lunch and had a bit more opportunity to do some networking. My name is Ann Kershaw. I'm from the Ontario Centers of Excellence and I'll be your host for this afternoon's procurement marketplace. If you weren't with us this morning, the procurement marketplace is all about connecting with government, business with government and providing opportunity to meet face to face and we're joined today by a number of procurement representatives from all levels of government and from numerous ministries who can be found throughout the marketplace and at dedicated tables in the surrounding area. I encourage you to make connections, let them know about your products and services and find out more about procurement policies and practices. This morning we heard a presentation from the Ministry of Economic Development and Innovation on the GreenFit program through which the government, using its own purchasing power, is creating opportunities for new green technology companies. There were also presentations from all three levels of government on the procurement process and how to do business with government. We're going to pick up on the doing business with government theme this afternoon with Helen Brader. Helen is Director, Strategic Initiatives and Innovation with the Office of Small and Medium Enterprises at Public Works and Government Services Canada and is representing the Canadian Innovation Commercialization Program or CICP. Helen will take questions after her presentation. Please welcome Helen. Hi. <laughs> Um, I don't know if we should give people a few more minutes or if we, we should just start off. Oh, there's my screen, so I can't see that one. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll tell you a little bit about myself uh, and uh, about the program. So my name is Helen Brader. Um, I'm the director of the Canadian Please Innovation... Please show my attention, please. In the town of Theater, the Water Opportunities Act is beginning shortly. Please make your way to the town of Theater. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I am the director responsible for the Canadian Innovation Commercialization Program. Um, it is a federal government program. It sits within Public Works and Government Services Canada, um, which is the buying arm of the federal government. And the reason why we're there is because it is a procurement program. Um, it sits within Public Works within something called the Office of Small and Medium Enterprises. Uh, we do have a booth over in the 400 section. The Office of Small and Medium Enterprises uh, mission is to help small and medium sized companies uh, who are doing or who would like to do business with the federal government. So if that's of interest to you, uh, please head over to the OSME offices. So as I'm sure you're aware, there's a lot of programs out there to help uh, businesses through the early and mid stages of R&D. Okay? Uh, they can be grants and contributions programs, loans and financing programs, but through the barrier work that we were doing at the Office of Small and Medium Enterprises, we found that a lot of companies were having trouble moving their innovations from the lab into the marketplace. Okay? That pre-commercialization gap was having a serious effect on Canadian companies. They were having difficulty finding a first-time buyer or a reference sale, and they were telling us that it was easier to sell to a foreign government than it was to sell to the Canadian government. And we have a really, really shocking example of that, and that is our little friend, the Blackberry. So as I'm sure you know, a Ontario company called Research in Motion developed the BlackBerry and they came to the Canadian government and said, you know, we have this great device that you can use. You've got email in your hand, uh, on the go. And the Canadian government said, mm, yeah, I, I guess it looks cool. Why don't you go try and sell it to the Americans? Uh, which RIM did. They sold to Department of Defense. And I'm sure, as you can all guess, all federal employees now have these permanently strapped to them. So this is a problem. The Canadian government was not supporting Canadian innovators. So what we did is we came up with CICP, and it is designed to support Canadian companies in moving their innovations from the lab into the marketplace. So it was announced in budget 2010, um, and uh, you can see some of the commitments that were made, the, or what the government recognizes. So the government recognizes that companies have difficulty moving their innovations from the lab into the marketplace. This challenge, of course, is very significant for smaller companies, and the government recognizes that small and medium-sized companies are the engine of the Canadian economy. Budget 2012, which just came out, reaffirmed the government's commitment to this program 
uh, it made the program permanent, which is great because we were a two-year pilot set to expire, so we are now permanent. And it uh, promised additional funding for a military component. So, oh, it still says, oh no, through a competitive procurement process. That's a really important word, competitive procurement. This is a procurement. We are buying the innovations competitively, and I'll talk about that a little bit later, through a call for proposals. It's just like a request for proposals that goes on Merck's. We will procure pre-commercial, again, a critical word. The innovations must be pre-commercial, and what we mean by that is not have not been sold commercially. So if you've sold for beta testing, uh, that's okay. Um, and will be tested by federal departments. So not only do we buy your innovation, we will actually place it within a federal department who will test your innovation and provide you with feedback that you can use to bring that innovation into full commercialization. Um, we have four priority areas. So they're environment, health, safety and security, and what I like to call everything else, enabling technologies. There is nothing that will not fit within these four priority areas, and there is nothing that the government does not buy. Okay? So I know most people think that government workers, we all sit at desks and chairs in front of computers, and, and I do. But we have labs all across the country. We support uh, multiple populations. We support a prison population. We support the Canadian Forces population. We provide support services to the Aboriginal population. Um, we have like I said, labs across the country. Did you know Parks Canada dives down to underwater uh, shipwrecks? I mean, we do all sorts of weird and wonderful and fascinating things. So, just to quickly go over the objectives of the program. So, assisting and bridging the pre-commercialization gap. So, I'm sure as you're aware, there are so many great innovations out there that never, ever make it to the market. Potential customers want to know who have you sold to? Who is your reference customer? Okay? Has this innovation been tested by a real customer? Okay? We can give you that reference sale. Supporting Canadian businesses. It makes economic sense for the Government of Canada to support Canadian businesses. It's good for the economy, it's good for the country. Okay? And that's what this program's about. Real world evaluation. So as I said, we will take your innovation, we will place it in a federal department. We like to talk about having uh, real world tests, okay, operational tests, place your innovation in an operational setting, if we can. That doesn't always make sense. Okay? So if you've come up with an innovative airbag, I'm not going to take all the airbags out of existing RCMP vehicles and replace them with uh, innovative untested airbags, that would not be a great idea. So we would test that in our DRDC uh, lab in Toronto. There's a test track there. We'll just fire those puppies down. So it depends on the innovation as to where we will test it. Improving the efficiency and effectiveness of government operations. Well, that's a big statement, but it's true. You know what? The government of Canada buys a very certain way. We like to go out there with predetermined specs. We, instead of saying what our problem is, we like to go out there and tell you what we think the solution is. Okay, so we tell you we want to buy it, we want it this big and this wide and three wheels and this shade of green. Okay, this program is doing this very differently. We're basically going out there and saying, show us your cool stuff. And I will get into what we're really looking for later. But that way you can show us what you've got that we can then use to improve our efficiencies, okay? to improve how we deliver services to Canadians. So just to understand, is CICP right for you? This is really the key of what we're evaluating. Okay, So number one, most important, is how innovative your product or service is. How much of an advance on state of the art is your innovation as compared to what is currently commercially available. Okay, that's number one, the thing that we're looking for. Okay, um, we're also looking at a few other components. We're looking at firm, and people always get scared about this when I say demonstrate that you have financial capacity, management team, and IP strategy. So I'm gonna quickly talk about that. Financial capacity, 
I know that a lot of startups, a lot, a lot of these companies, you have never sold anything. So obviously you are not in the black. You are not profitable as of yet. And that's fine. What we want to know is if you're here and commercialization is here and you require funding to get from where you are now to where you need to be, how are you going to do that? Okay, we need to see what your financial plan is for getting there. Okay? And that's the same with the management team. So what we're looking for is we're looking for companies that are planning on commercializing the innovation and have set themselves up to do so. All right, so we're not looking for a CEO and a CIO and a CFO, but we are looking as to whether you have the uh, management structure in place to be able to commercialize. That's what this program is about. It is about getting companies to commercialization, getting companies profitable, uh, contributing to the Canadian economy. IP, this is a really important thing. There's a lot of questions about IP. So number one, the IP strategy uh, appropriate IP strategy to commercialize. So the, a patent is the most obvious one, of course, but it doesn't have to be a patent. Okay, you, but you do have to demonstrate that you have an IP strategy. Now I'm just gonna stop for a sec here and talk a little bit on the side about IP because I always get the question, are you taking some of or all of my intellectual property in this program? Because there are other federal programs that for various reasons do that. The answer is a clear, clear no. I am not interested in your IP. I do not want a filing cabinet full of patents. I wouldn't know what to do with them. This is as if you're making a commercial sale, okay? I'm buying the stuff. I'm buying your product or service. I'm buying your innovation. The IP is yours, all right? Oh, commercialization readiness. TRL 7 to 9, I'm not sure if people are familiar with technology readiness levels. Uh, I'll talk about it in another slide coming up soon. But basically we're looking for late stage R&D. So here it is, these are the technology readiness levels. We adapted this from the US military, so we really, really liked it. Um, so we are playing Ladies in... We are playing in late stage R&D. So that's TRL 789. Uh, if anybody was familiar with the program in our first round at the very, very beginning of our pilot, we were looking at innovations in TRL 6789, but there's a very clear break between six and seven. Six is it works in my bathtub and I wanna get it to work in the ocean. Seven is I have a prototype that can work in the ocean. So we're really looking at you having a product or service or a prototype of that product or service that is ready for testing, okay? So TRL7, as you can see, is an innovation that only requires tweaking in order to get it to function in an operational setting. So here, this does look a little complicated, but basically this is where you need to be. This is that advance on state of the art. How much of an advance on state of the art is your innovation? as compared to what is commercially available. So if you look on the bottom, the x-axis, that's your TRL, you wanna be in 789, and then state of the art. So you can see that you have an innovation that could be a slight improvement on state of the art versus an innovation that may be a significant improvement on state of the art. So I'll give you a good example. The first generation of tablets that were out there, I mean, that was a massive, improvement on state of the art. There was really nothing else like it, okay? I mean, you had phones, they weren't quite smartphones, you certainly had laptops, but there were no tablets, okay? So that would have been a significant, extreme advance on state of the art. But the second generation tablets that came out, I mean, let's be honest, my six-year-old could have come up with the fact that hey, I can Skype on my laptop, but I can't Skype on this tablet. Maybe there should be a camera on this, okay? So slapping a camera on the front and the back of it, I mean, the company that did so did very, very well, but it's not a significant advance on state of the art. So this is the key, and, and that's just to give you a, a little description just to, so you can get an understanding of what we're talking about by advance on state of the art. So here, this is just a, an, an expansion. I've talked about this management team, resources to sustain commercialization, and appropriate IP strategy, um, and then market rollout, operation, marketing, employment plans, and consideration of market risks. That's what you will be evaluated on. 
Okay, so that's what we're looking at. We want to know that you understand your market, okay? That you understand who your competitors are, what you have to do to compete against them. What's your strategy? What's your plan? Are you planning on getting your product or service onto the shelves of Walmart? Are you planning on being a component of something else? So what does that look like? We want to see that thought out. So here we're going to get into how this works. So as I mentioned, this is a procurement, not a loan, not a grants and contribution. And that means that we go out with a call for proposals. It's like a request for proposals for anybody that's familiar with doing business with really any level of government. So we go out on Mercs, which is the government's electronic tendering service. Okay, and we post a call for proposals. And what that does is it outlines what we're looking for. Okay, and we will then evaluate your proposals against the criteria. So here are some of the mandatory criteria that you must meet. If you do not meet these, do not submit a proposal. I know that a lot of times you'll be advised, oh, just throw it in there, you'll never know what's gonna happen, but I can tell you what's gonna happen. Uh, because it's a procurement, if you do not meet these, you will be screened out. So, be valued at 500k or less. Right now, uh, we have about 15 to 18 million dollars a year as we move forward to buy the actual innovations, to spend on innovations. And in order to make sure we get as many innovations as possible, we are capping your maximum proposal value, so the maximum amount that we will buy from you under this program to half a million dollars. So what does that mean? I had somebody once ask a question, he said, well, I have an energy bar that costs a dollar. So does that mean that you would give me a contract for a dollar? No. You tell me however many or however much of your innovation, up to 500K, that you need to sell to us in order for an adequate test. So for example, with the energy bar, perhaps the test plan would be that he wants all of RCMP officers in a certain province to have the energy bars available in their vehicle over a three month period and that would be 100,000 energy bars. And so that would be a $100,000 contract. So then he said, well, wait a second, why wouldn't I just say I want every federal public servant to have an energy bar at their desk and get a $500,000 contract? Well, that's not a reasonable test plan, okay? So within reason, up to 500K. Not have been sold commercially, this is a pre-commercialization program. If you have sold commercially, then you do fall outside of the parameters of the program. Um, as I mentioned before, if you've sold for beta testing, that's fine. If you're working with a university, that's fine. Uh, but for full, no full commercial sales, either here or abroad. Be provided by Canadian bidders. Um, this is a program to support Canadian companies, uh, brought to you by the Federal Government of Canada. So we are looking for Canadian companies. 80% Canadian content. So this is an interesting one. The Government of Canada does have something that we call the Canadian content policy. Um, it's fairly old and talks about the fibers and chairs. Uh, we're not talking about that. So if we were to take our handy dandy Blackberry again, my infamous example, um, I think we could agree this is a Canadian innovation. But if we were to take this apart and make a pile of all the little bits inside it that were actually manufactured in Canada and all the little bits and pieces that were manufactured abroad, the abroad pile would probably be bigger. That's not necessarily what we're talking about when we talk about Canadian content. I want to know that the R&D was done primarily here, okay? The brains behind the operations here in Canada, all right? Not necessarily where the case of this came from. Show IP ownership or rights. So you either have to own the IP or you need to be licensed to use it, okay? It must be yours. Uh, and be included in one of the four priority areas, as I showed you before, uh, health, uh, enabling technologies, environment, and, uh, oh my goodness, and safety and security. Thank you from one of our innovators in the back. Uh, but like I said, everything fits into there, will fit into those categories. So what's the process? Um, call for proposal goes out. I don't know if anybody has experience doing business with the Government of Canada, if anybody's ever gone on Mercs and has seen the way it normally works. So the way it normally works is you go into Mercs, you download your call for proposals, you get this big, thick, 60, 80, 120 page document, and then you open up your computer in Word or whatever program you're using and you start typing, okay? 
we discovered this really cool, neat thing out there called the internet. And so we've decided to use that tool to have an innovative way of receiving proposals. So rather than you typing it out, printing out seven copies in binders, you know, financials sealed in a separate envelope and trotting that down to the bid receiving unit before two o'clock on a Thursday, what we do is we have an online uh, bid submission system. You go to that system and each of the requirements is, is laid out. Okay, and then we will tell you what we're looking for. So we'll give you an idea of what would be a complete answer. And then within the text box, you respond to the requirement. Okay, and then you press submit. What's even cooler about that is the next stage, we then don't go and print those all out. Okay, we had 375 proposals in the first round, 335 in the second round, and uh, somewhere in the range of 250 in the third round. We actually do the evaluations online. We use 140 NRC IRAP. Is everybody familiar with the IRAP program, the Industrial Research Assistance Program? If you are not familiar with this program and you are in R&D, you must become familiar with this program. Okay? They provide a whole host of support services to you. So we've partnered with them and they're the ones that do our evaluations. Okay, they have the technical knowledge and expertise in a wide range of areas, and they also have experience evaluating proposals. Me and my team of 10, we cannot evaluate 300 proposals. So what we do is they access the system, two ITAs, industrial technology advisors, evaluate each proposal, and they come up with a score, okay? What we then do is we take the scores from highest to lowest, and we make a big list. Okay. We then take the top group of them, let's say the top 50 or so, and we bring those to something we call the Innovation Selection Committee. Okay. That group is our external review group. Government is really, really good at sitting in rooms and developing programs that we think sound awesome. And then we take them out, we roll them out to industry, and industry says, yeah, the concept was good, but nice try. It doesn't actually meet our needs. So we do have this external review panel. In the first round, we had a whole bunch of CEOs, uh, VCs, angels. We had Brett Wilson from the Dragon's Den. He came in uh, to help us with our evaluations. And what they do is they do look at the proposals and they will tell us whether things should be in and out. But really what they're there to do is say, are these the top 50 innovations in Canada that a program like this should be seeing? Did we get it right? Okay. Um, they also will look at our the questions we're asking, the approach we're taking, and giving us some advice. Based on their advice, from the first round especially, as well as a lot of feedback from suppliers, we made huge changes to the program for round two. In round two, we took a different approach to the Innovation Selection Committee. We moved to use entrepreneurs and residents from universities across the country. Uh, you know, they have one foot in academia and one foot out there, and we thought that would give us a really neat and different perspective on the program, and it did. So that's been so useful. So like I said, they do have the ability to re-rank proposals. Well, they can't re-rank them. They can recommend them back to IRAP for re-ranking, but that's not the purpose of this panel. Hey, we then have the final ranking of proposals. So like I said, they're starting from top to bottom, and we start going down one, two, three, four, and I draw a line when we run out of money, okay? And that's the line. So in the first round, we pre-qualified 27 innovations. In the second round, we pre-qualified 37 innovations. We are currently doing the evaluations for round three. I would like to say that there are four of our innovations, four pre-qualified CICP innovations here. Okay, we have the Bombardier track safe. And it's, uh, it's over there, it's really cool. I got to ride the Segway on the track, on the test track. We have Temporal Power, which is a flywheel energy storage device. They're over there. Uh, we have um, the Arion Scout, unmanned aerial vehicle is here. And we have the uh, underwater laser scanner, which is also over there. So of the 64 innovations, four are actually here on the floor and that's super exciting. Uh, for me to actually see them here. So um, we then match the innovation to a federal government department. So in the proposal, we will ask you where you think your innovation should be tested. 
So a lot of people say, well, do I get bonus points? Like if I find a match, does that move me up the scale? So the answer is no. Um, we really want this program to be open and fair to everybody. Like if you're in a center like Toronto or Ottawa, you're close to government, you're used to university funding, you're in an incubator, you have access to government departments. You have an idea of where your innovation might be tested. You have access to people who can help you with that. If you're up in Cold Lake, Alberta, well perhaps that's a bad, bad example, we have a base up there, but if you're up in the Yukon, you don't know what the federal government does, you don't necessarily have those contacts. So we wanted to really level the playing field. So we do ask the question. We do get people that say, I don't know, Parks Canada, Environment Canada, I'm not sure. I do get other people that say, Bob Smith, DND, here's his phone number. By all means, if you know that Bob Smith wants to test your innovation through this program and you've been working with him, please, please tell me. It makes my job easier, it makes my team's job easier. But if you don't have that contact, that's okay we will find that contact for you. Okay, we will find that match. Then what we do is you will work with a statement of work writer uh, who we provide to you and the test department and you will come up with a test plan. It will be based on the test plan that you submitted but it will be tailored to the needs of, of your company as well as to the federal department that will be testing your innovation. And once that's hammered out, we move into testing. Uh, you don't just necessarily send your innovation to them and they test it and they send you a feedback form. You can actually participate in the testing. You put whatever you need in that test plan. Okay, we test it and then a key, key, key of this program is we provide you with feedback. Okay, most of the departments are providing the innovators with ongoing feedback as well as a formalized feedback form at the end, which you can use to help you move your innovation into full commercialization. So how does it work? How do you make a submission? So obtain a PBN, a procurement business number is something that you need in order to do business with the Government of Canada. And if you have questions about that, again, I encourage you to go over to the OSME, the Office of Small and Medium Enterprises booth. It's in the 400 row down over there. And they will tell you about how to get a PBN. Okay, then you have to register on Mercs. Um, if you've never been to Mercs, Go. You don't have to register to browse. Okay, go check it out. It's everything the federal government buys. You will be amazed. You can. It's all sorted out by category. It shows what's new today, what the new requirements, the new uh, RFPs that are out there right now. We also use that as a tool to do something called RFIs. So we'll go out and say, you know what? This is our procurement strategy for office furniture. Or, even more importantly, which Suzanne will talk about, this is our procurement strategy for R&D moving into the future. Please read it and provide us with comments. Okay, that's all on Mercs. And Suzanne Lorraine is gonna follow me and she's gonna talk more about that. Okay, um, check it out. You can register on Mercs for free. And again, if you wanna know how to do that, go over to our booth and we will tell you. Um, you order the call for proposals. So what you'll see on Mercs is there are dollars associated, but because you're downloading federal opportunities, it is free. So a lot of people ask, well, why? Why do you have it? Mercs, we don't own Mercs, okay? Mercs is a third party. It's like the eBay of government procurement. So what they do is they post opportunities from the Canadian government, from the federal government, from some of the provincial governments, the US government's on there, the pri there's private sector companies on there, and we use that as a marketplace what we do is we ensure that federal opportunities are free to you, but there are fees associated with using some of the other Merck services. So don't be scared off by this order. The dollar value will be zero for a federal government order. Read the call for proposals thoroughly. Please, 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 okay? Read it. Everything you need to know will be in there. It's gonna link you back to our website. Uh, we do have a website for this program. It's buyandsell.gc.ca. I will post at the end slash innovation. Okay, um, it will link you to that for information. I really encourage you to read everything. Okay, determine the needed time to answer questions. I know now it's standing silly. Do not wait till the last minute. The bulk of our activity on the systems on the last in the last 48 hours. We have people downloading the call in the last 48 hours. You are not going to be able to put together a proper proposal in a day. Okay. Um, the other thing about not waiting for the last last minute 
is if there if the system crashes on my end, of course I will deal with it. But if if it's on your end, if you have a power outage in your community or your server goes down and you don't get that proposal in on time, there is nothing I can do about it. This is a procurement. We are governed by acts, regulations, policies that are very clear, okay? So make sure that you do take the time to fill it out properly and make sure that you get it in on time. So I'm almost done my presentation. I think that a lot of you can see what the benefits are of the program. So for businesses, I think the, the benefits are fairly obvious. Um, the first one, connect with government departments. Well, what does that mean? Okay, I haven't talked about that at all. So what that is, is we have, the Office of Small and Medium Enterprises has offices across the country, okay? We have six regional offices across the country. And one of the things that we deliver are seminars and information sessions about CICP. And something that all of our regional offices do, and Sivaraj, who's standing at the back, is the director of the Toronto Regional Office, is we hold innovation marketplaces. They may have different names in different regions. And what we do at those is we'll bring in different government departments, uh, both that have services that support innovators like you. So we'll bring in NSERC and IRAP, maybe the SHRED program, CRA. Uh, as well as CICP, and we also may bring in departments that can be testers for you. Okay, so it gives you that opportunity to meet departments that have other programs and also departments that may be able to test and use your innovation. Address department, oh sorry, no we're on the other side. Uh, gain a contract with the federal government. How important is that? Not just a contract, this is a first sale and it's a government sale. It's a sale to a to the Canadian federal government, okay? So you have that reference sale. Receive feedback, we've talked about that. You can use that feedback uh, to bring your innovation into full commercialization um, and be better prepared to enter the market, we hope, as well as be better prepared to do business potentially with the federal government because you will have that experience. For government, we get to get your stuff, okay? There are so many departments that tell me that they really, really want access to innovations out there, but right now, we don't have a good way of buying them. Our system's just not set up for it. So a lot of these departments can't get what they want or what they need, but this program gives them that access. Okay, address departmental challenges, like I said, we don't necessarily know what's out there that can help us meet our needs and better deliver services to Canadians. Okay, so getting your stuff into the government allows us to do that. and. Very importantly, support Canadian businesses. So here it is, the contact information. Um, innovation at pwgsc.gc.ca. That's our program email address. Um, send any questions that you have to that address. Uh, it's not a black hole. It is manned all the time. It's not just going to go into the ether. Somebody will get back to you. The program website, I'm going to talk for a second about buyandsell.gc.ca. Another really great innovation was this buyandsell.gc.ca website. One of the other barriers that kept coming up over and over again from companies was when we go to do business with the federal government, we don't know where to go to get information. It's all over the place, it's on multiple websites, it's inconsistent, it's not up to date. So now what we've put together is this website. It's everything you ever wanted to know about procurement with the federal government. If you put slash innovation, that's specific to CICP. Um, there's the Merck's website address. And I do encourage you to go onto our website and subscribe to our CICP update mailing list. I promise, 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 I will not send you uh, anything but CICP specific information. So you will not be inundated with daily emails full of perhaps not as relevant information. So that's all for me. Um, I'd love to take your questions. Thank you. Oh, I think there's a microphone coming. Hi, thank you for the presentation. When's the next call for proposals? So we're in an interesting time period here. So what happened was in, in budget 2010, we were announced as a two-year pilot. So. Under that two-year pilot, we have run the last call for proposals, and the money would run out at the end of this fiscal year, which is March 2013. But, great news, Budget 2012, as I mentioned, uh, made the program permanent and gave us additional funding. 
for anybody who is not familiar with the government, just because the budget says I get $95 million over the next three years doesn't mean that they then transfer it right into my account. What I have to do is put something called a Treasury Board submission together to demonstrate that I'm actually going to spend that money properly. So once our Treasury Board submission goes in and it's approved, then the money will be transferred to the program and we will go with another call. A very long answer to say, and don't tell anybody I said this, we're looking at late in the calendar year. Okay? So let's go, let's say sometime between fall and winter. Keep your eye open on Merck's or subscribe to our mailing list and we will keep you updated. Uh, I have a comment. First, one of the comments I have is that uh, one of the benefits to business is that by selling to the federal government, you have a, uh, a much greater opportunity to sell internationally. Yes. Because if the Canadian government doesn't buy it, you don't sell elsewhere. Uh, McDonald Detwater started with exactly a similar program in the science procurement branch back in the 1970s. Optech, a whole bunch of other major Canadian success stories started with the uh, science procurement program and this is exactly the same thing and this is exactly what the government should have been doing 25 years ago. Yes, yeah, so this is, so you're familiar with the unsolicited proposal program Absolutely. then? Absolutely. Yes, so this is the new unsolicited proposal program, the better unsolicited proposal program for anybody that was familiar with that. Um, because NAFTA has come into play since then, um, we've had to make some changes. But also, with the unsolicited proposal program, there were only certain departments who were playing. Okay, So if your innovation didn't meet the needs of those departments, um, you couldn't necessarily play. We theoretically can go to any federal department. Uh, but yes, it is. we did learn from that in developing this program, and it was sorely needed to bring back the, the unsolicited proposal program. How many firms apply for the program versus how many are actually get are awarded? So, as I mentioned in the first round, there was a lot of excitement. We had 375 companies submit proposals, and we awarded, well, we didn't award, we pre-qualified 27 companies. And in the second round, we had 335 proposals submitted, and we have 37 companies pre-qualified. Now, I don't want people to think that their chances are 10%. This is not a lottery, okay? If you are a significant advance on state of the art, if you have the plan in place to commercialize, okay, you will be at the top. All right. I want to make sure people understand it's not a 10% chance. There were a lot of people, especially in the first round, who did submit proposals that perhaps did not meet the requirements set out by the program. Um, but yes, right now the numbers seem low, but the innovations we got were phenomenal. It's very exciting. Oh, that's a really good question. So again, anybody that's familiar, he asked what, how long is the decision cycle? So anybody who is familiar with federal procurement knows that we take our time to make sure that we get it right. Uh, <laughs> and that may be a very long time, but that doesn't meet your needs as a, pre a company with a pre-commercial innovation. I should say pre-commercial at the date that the call for proposals closes. Okay, you can commercialize that afternoon. We are not asking you to keep your innovation in stasis while we make our decisions. But we have really, really tried to reduce our cycle time. So I'll give you an example. We closed our second call for proposals November 16th. No, was it? Can't remember these. Hold on, I have this written down. Basically, we're looking at two to three months for the full, no, sorry. We closed the second call August 2011. We did the evaluations in September and October. Our innovation selection committee met in November. We had the letters out to the companies in the first week of December. Okay, so August, September, October, November, December, four months. We're cutting it down to three months this round. Okay, we're really trying to get this down to science, but to make sure that we meet your needs. We don't want a year long decision cycle. So we are trying. Are there any other questions? Yes? Oh, wait. They want the microphone for the feed. 
you provide services. Mm -hmm. um, and we were wondering about vendor of records with um, the government, the federal government. What specifically? Um, specifically, how would a company get on a vendor of record? So that falls outside of this program. Okay. If you do want to know how somebody gets like on a standing offer or a supply arrangement or anything like that, um, after this, some of our people, and two of them are sitting behind you, oh, okay. uh, will be out in the little procurement marketplace and they can talk to you about that. Or you can go to our booth. Um, I do encourage you, I should say, the Office of Small and Medium Enterprises runs seminars all the time on how to do business with the federal government. And I strongly encourage you to go to those. Um, there's an office here in Toronto, there's one in Ottawa, and then if you're not from here, uh, we have them all across the country. Okay, so I would encourage you to talk to one of my colleagues after this or go to the booth. Thank you. Are there any other questions? There you go, see? And, and he is the man behind you who can help you with that. So if there are no other questions, um, I will be available after for a little bit. Um, should I introduce Suzanne or are we going to wait till 3 o'clock? So I'm going to introduce uh, my colleague, Suzanne Lorrain, and she is the Senior Director of Science Procurement Directorate. I do want to say uh, she's actually a partner in this program. Without her, we wouldn't actually be, be able to buy your stuff, okay? I am not a procurement expert, she is, and her and her team actually do the, the actual buying and contracting for the program, and they've also been invaluable in helping us design the call for proposals, um, be innovative when it comes to the procurement side of it, and, and that's been a phenomenal partnership and very exciting. So here's Suzanne. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. How are you? It's my first time here at the um, OCE Discovery, and I'm finding it absolutely terrific. I'm um, getting to see uh, CICP suppliers as well, but um, other suppliers that I've dealt with in universities. Um, let's see, all right. So, following um, uh, Helen's presentation, I'm here to discuss a broader perspective on procurement and opportunities and initiatives that you should be aware of. I'm responsible for R&D contracting in the full gamut of technology areas, including defense, space, health, transport, natural resources, and much more, of course, including uh, CICP. Um, PWGSC is supporting innovation through CICP, of course, but uh, we support innovation uh, and R&D through every program and requirement that we procure for uh, departments that we deal with. And again, that, that includes national defense, um, uh, the Canadian Space Agency, the RCMP, um, Natural Resources Canada, Transport Canada, all departments that are science-based, science-based department and agencies that have a, a focus in R&D, we deal with. So the way we're structured is at headquarters, we, I have a team of about 40, 50 people doing R&D procurement specifically. And in the regions, there are satellite uh, offices, if you will, um, and, uh, and officers that specialize in R&D as well. So if you're in the Toronto area, there's a PWGSC, Mississauga office, there's procurement uh, uh, personnel there, should, should you um, wish to ever contact them and, and ask for advice from them. Okay. So my overview will, will be a, a really broad, to, to discuss some of the new uh, initiatives and, and some of the key areas that we're working on. The call for proposal methodology. You'll see in my next slides, one of the things I thought you might be interested in, you've heard about CICP, of course, but there are other opportunities similar to CICP, but CICP is for late stage development. You have other programs that exist in departments that are for earlier stage, even in, say, defense industrial, um, defense, um, um, industrial research programs. So, so, so some of the programs have a, a more significant research component than CICP, which is really into the late stage development. So there's a whole scale and gamut of R&D. 
Um, the call for proposal, the thing that's really unique and, and interesting about the call for proposal, as, as Helen said, it's an RFP, but it's, it's what I call freestyle RFP. It's based on program objectives. This, the CICP um, program itself does not have any statements of work. The only thing it has is we're interested in cer certain areas of innovation. Some of the other programs I'm going to be talking to you about uh, in a few minutes are about public safety, police research, uh, CBRN, uh, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear explosive R&D. So technology to equip Canada and, and first responders and the provinces and municipalities to deal with terrorism and using science and technology to, to better equip um, our, our civilian uh, uh, authorities. Um, so the other unique aspect of, of call for proposals is the collaborative approach. Now, CICP is a program where you'll propose your innovation. It's not that collaborative other than the fact that you have departments who are going to be evaluating your technology. But some of the other programs I'm going to be talking about, you actually, at the proposal stage, uh, come together with scientists in departments to collaboratively develop proposals. So again, this is a this is a practice that you don't see anywhere else in the procurement world, sitting down with your client during the competitive process to develop proposals. Um, so because it's about innovation, every proposal is unique. It's, it's not a comparison of proposals, which is mainly the case in normal procurement. When you're buying a, an IT system, we're going to compare all of the IT systems against you know, performance uh, specification and so on. In, in the type of, of uh, procurement process we're talking about, very broad categories of evaluation. Is it, eva is it innovative? Um, do you have a strategy, a commercialization strategy? Um, and so on. So, so it's really about judging the quality of innovation, the quality of the R&D proposal. Again, very different from the normal procurement process, which, which um, is about judging against a, a specification and, and evaluating and selecting on the basis of price. Um, Obviously, because we're dealing with um, innovations in R&D, it's higher complexity. So as, as Elaine alluded to, Helen, uh, we're, we're trying to make the process easier to do that. Although we're dealing with great complexity, we're trying to simplify the process at the same time. In fact, that's a comment that's been raised in the Jenkins report, that the process is cumbersome, it's complex, it's convoluted, and for many of you, it's a barrier in bidding, and we've heard that through Jenkins and, uh, and through CICP, and we've tried to address that in the national strategy for R&D, and I'll tell you a little more about that in a moment. So I'll, I'll just talk to you very quickly about programs that you might be interested in, the first one being the CRTI program. This is one of which is collaborative. Uh, industry, universities, and departments come together Proposals can be submitted by any one of those three parties. Proposals can be submitted by government scientists, by universities, and by industry. And, and the contracts we award for the, under these programs are involve multi-parties, in some cases, other nations as well. So in, in some of the projects that we've done, we've issued contracts to IBM, University of Ottawa, and... Uh, and and some other smaller firm for one project because, again, the three uh, partners bring all their synergies to deliver on ambitious, game-changing type of technologies and, and, um, and knowledge. Um, go to the next one. 
another program you might be interested in is a public uh, security technical program. Again, the focus on that program is mostly uh, border security. They were very involved in uh, the uh, Vancouver Olympics, the G8 uh, events in, in Toronto. They provide a lot of the technology to support security and safety for, these, for that particular program. But, but it's, it's an area that, that's getting more and more investment because of continuing uh, focus on, on, on public safety. Canadian Police Research Centre, a bit smaller. Have, I've seen dogs today here at the, uh, at the convention. Uh, we've actually developed uh, vests, bulletproof vests for dogs. Dogs are, are a, a true asset to the police force and their health and safety is, is, a, is a primary concern. So we've developed vests under that program. It's just an example. Unfortunately, you see the picture of the taser there. There's a lot of research that is being done into how to use that technology safely uh, and understanding that technology and refining it and improving it. Next one is the Defense Industrial Research Program. So that's a program that, that involves earlier research. Um, it's uh, led by Defense R&D. And, and, and again, the, the areas of interest for that program are as broad as you can think of. It's everything that, that involves uh, you know, weapon systems, electronic systems, big in IT systems uh, because of security concerns, so security, uh, and so on. Um, it's a program that, that has been renewed. Some of you have, may have known uh, it's, it's been uh, in existence for some time, but there was a hiatus when we changed the formulation of program, made it much more open and transparent. The other thing we did, it converted to an open season process. I spoke earlier about making it easier for suppliers and innovators to propose their technologies. Well, we are going, we're going open season. The call for proposal is permanently on Merck's. And, and we have windows of opportunities to submit bids. So instead of having a one window per year, and if you miss it, then you're, 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 you have to wait a year, you program such a, what we're doing under the DIR program allows you to bid at four different, or three or four different periods during the year. So it allows you to be much more timely in your process. So, uh, what's next for CF, the call for proposal? Uh, we're always advancing uh, the, the, our, our techniques and our process to again respond to the concerns that have been expressed by, by industry and, and, and innovators. The, the three programs, what Defense is doing is, is linking them up. Uh, into one. So we're going to be doing a harmonized program so that if you're interested in the domains that are covered under this program, it's all into one as opposed to three separate silos. Integration is, is one area where there's a lot of improvements that, that we want to make and, uh, and so you'll be seeing a harmonized version of a call for proposal that's going to be using the open season, again, much more open and, and conducive to receiving the best proposals from you in a timely way. The last point is really important, the sustaining the investment. And we're going to start doing that with these three programs. Here's how this is important. Right now, talking about silos, CRTI, for instance, has different type of projects, technology demonstration, actually it's development, demonstration, acceleration. And then you're stopped. There's no, there's no source of funding to carry you through, which is why there's a, there's a gap between commercialization. What we want to do is align these, these project proposals and programs so that if you come in and you're successful and you meet certain parameters, we will sustain the investment. You will be moved through the various um, R&D um, activities to grow that technology and get it much more ready for market. So this is something that I think has a lot of promise. In the future, it could even be, if we're successful, that we will link CICP 
to these other programs where Government of Canada, CSA, DND, National Re Resources Canada, uh, Transport Canada, investing money in developing proposals, and that when the, the technology is ready at a readiness state for CICP, it's linked. And, and so Government of Canada really uh, leverages its investment in this technology and really supports fully the whole process of bringing new technology to the market. So I've, I've spoken about uh, the, the open season, the fact that it's on Merck's, it's highly visible. So the issue now is going to be for, uh, for us to, to make it even simpler, to make it more um, um, harmonized between the three programs, simpler, clearer, more consistent against all these programs, which will allow us to then integrate all of it into a really full-scale uh, investment approach in R&D. So, uh, I've spoken about uh, sustaining the investment. The other area that Go Government of Canada is truly interested in doing is the collaborative approach. I spoke about it under the CRTI program, but there's a project called Project Accord that seeks to uh, set a new center for uh, capability analysis. Now we're talking about national defense here. Um, so through the work in this cap capability analysis, suppliers will have an opportunity to fully understand what DND is up to. Because this, this is going to be looking at national defense capabilities in the horizon of 5, 10, and 15 years. So you, you have a sense for where technology is going, where the needs are, the limitations, the constraints, and make that better known to you in, in collaboration with other S&T performers in the, in, within government at the RDC, for instance, Defense R&D Canada, and uh, with universities to bring and, and all the best minds together to solve very difficult, challenging, capability problems that defense is going to be facing in the years to come. Um, I, um, there's a, a slide missing here, so I'll just show you a document that my, my directorate is working on in consultation with my colleagues in the Office of Small and Medium Enterprises. It's the uh, draft national strategy for research and development. It was published on Merck's in March. It's still on Merck's now. How is this document important or useful to you? This document explains R&D procurement and how it is different and, um, and some of the things that we're trying to do um, to improve the process, make it more efficient, streamlined. Um, some of the things included in here are the programs I just named, if you're ever interested to pursue that, looking at that further. But it also talks about some of the issues we've heard from you, from universities, for instance, uh, concerns on IP, uh, limitation of liability, warranty issues, uh, how we do business with, with um, industry, with universities, um, how we improve that process how by learning from you, we, uh, we get to be what is perceived to be less risk adverse. Uh, we're be better able to understand your constraints or your, your issues to better address them in our, in our requirements, in our call for proposal, and in our contracts as well. So this, if you're interested, this document provides a lot of information. It's quite succinct. It also talks about this, the state of R&D in Canada and procurement, the amount of procurement that government is doing in what area and so on, some of the trends. We are looking for your feedback. That's why it's on Merck's right now. We've, we, before we issued this document, we had obtained initial feedback to to um, inform some of the key elements of, of the strategy. But now that it's out, we're really engaging uh, universities, industry, client departments to get their, their suggestions uh, and their thoughts about what concerns them. Is this on, are we on the right path? What's missing? 
how we could do it better. Uh, value proposition is an area like how do we maximize Canadian benefits to procurement, and that's done by cost sharing, by maximizing Canadian content, um, by uh, uh, looking at commercialization strategy, uh, evaluating in a much, much more sophisticated way, some of which is reflected in CICP. So I certainly encourage you to look at this document. It's on Merck's. It's, um, I'm going to be happy to provide reference to the website and that. I think that uh, review of this document, I'm sure, will prove to be enlightening. We've already received some comments from industry, uh, mo many of which are already addressed in the strategy, but we absolutely welcome your thoughts. As part of this whole process, a community of practice is going to be created because it's about not reinventing the wheel. When, when we want to, to streamline, we, we need to continue pushing that envelope and making sure that, that we're, we're consistent. Suppliers know what to expect when they're dealing with us. It's not cumbersome. So we're trying to put some knowledge to paper here to explain to both our clients, my colleagues in the regions, because suppliers have said, you know, I'm dealing with the Mississauga office and they're doing things differently than you are at headquarters. Well, I've heard that and we're, we're addressing that. So um, again, I think that the, this particular uh, effort on our part is going to pay some fruits and dividends in allowing you to better respond to our opportunities, to the benefits of Government Canada, and frankly, to all Canadians. So um, I would be happy to address any questions you may have on procurement, either in general or in R&D, uh, with, with anything I can help demystify for you. Um, happy to address any questions. Thank. I think there's a gentleman here. Oh, is there someone? No? No? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'd like to very much thank uh, Helen and Suzanne for their very informative and valuable presentations today. I do have a small gift for each of them as a token of our gratitude for taking time out of their busy schedules. And uh, thanks to the Omar Theater as well for sponsoring this space today. And. Um, Everyone go ahead and enjoy the rest of your time at Discovery. Thanks so much for your questions and interest. Thank you.